right guys i'm back and as you can tell i'm putting a little bit more effort into these mazda monday videos so today um pretty much i want to go over the basics of how the engine operates that way you know when i when i start explaining more about turbos or naturally aspirated or supercharger builds you kind of know what's going on i can't give you all the details because you know it is a part of tuning so i'm not going to reveal all my secrets you know on how to get this motor to perform optimally but i will help you guys because you know you are going to be modifying your motors and i want to make sure you know you're actually getting your money's worth and not just buying pretty parts because you know you think it's going to add horsepower and really you're just it's just for looks so today i kind of just want to tell you about how the motor operates and how you know what like the sky to g what it's about and how they're able to do 14 to 1 compression and 13 to 1 compression ratios so um generally speaking you know a lot of cars are auto cycle which means you know you have you know your intake stroke um your compression stroke your exhaust stroke you know you got it's, it's a four stroke motor so you have your your operation right so mazda is not using a tra tra traditional auto cycle full time what mazda did they actually are using the Atkinson cycle, um, which allows the car to have the higher compression ratio. Um, I'm not David Coleman or whoever he is, but I'm just gonna kind of explain to you the difference between auto and Atkinson and how they have an auto Atkinson cycle, which some people refer to as like the Miller cycle. So pretty much, you know, you have your intake stroke where the intake valve is open and air is going into the cylinder, right? Um, and then after that air has been sucked into the cylinder, you have your compression stroke, right? So it goes up and as it's going up, you know, it's compressing this air and then you start your, you know, your ignition. So your, your, your spark plug fires and now you're expanding the gases, your power stroke, right? And then after your power stroke, when that cylinder is coming back up again, it, you're on your exhaust, um, you know, stroke as it's coming up, it's pushing all the exhaust gas out, right? So it's a four stroke. So you have, you know, intake, compression, power stroke, and exhaust, right? So what happens is as you're compressing that air, it's heating up, um, and this is when, you know, you can have knock and all that stuff. So what Mazda did, they did the Atkinson cycle. So what the Atkinson cycle does, it allows you as the cylinder is coming up, the, the intake valve actually stays open a little bit longer to allow some of that intake air to come out. So you're able to compress this gas without it pre-igniting, right? So in a normal auto cycle, you don't have that intake valve opening up. So it's, that intake valve shuts completely before you start the compression stroke, right? And you know, when it does that, you're only allowed a certain amount of compression uh, ratio. So we have a 13 to one, normal cars are about 10 to one or 11 to one. And because the cylinder is gonna be, you know, uh, 11 times smaller at the top than it is at the bottom. On ours, it's gonna be 13, 13 times smaller than it is um, at, you know, at the bottom than it is at the top. So along that way, when that air is compressing, it could heat up and pre-ignite. So what Mazda does, they allow that intake valve to stay open a little bit. So as you're compressing it, some of that air is escaping. So even though it is a 13-1 compression, it acts more like a 10 or 11 uh, to 1 compression because some of that air that was at the bottom is escaping through the intake valve. Now, um, the reason why this, they, they have this um, is to you know prevent pre-ignition, like I was saying, but also this car also does the auto cycle as well. And so with the auto cycle, it's, very, it's more efficient because you're keeping all that air in there and you're using all of it. So what Mazda does is they have the, the auto cycle during low load and when you're just cruising around so you can get more efficiency. And when you go high load, it switches to the Atkinson cycle and it allows some of that air that was being compressed to escape out so you don't get pre-detonation. So um, it's a very complicated system um, so the car, when you're like at full throttle, you're not getting a normal 13 to one compression of all the air like you would if the car was on a normal auto cycle. You're getting a little bit of the air going past the intake valves, 
and coming back out the intake. So I don't want to go too much and make the whole video about that. Um, but I am, you know, getting into all the performance mods. So I just kind of want to give you an overview on how the engine works. And we're, now we're going to go, I want to first start off with intakes because this is the most basic mod that most people do other than tuning and exhaust, right? So we're going to start with intakes on this video. And I kind of want to explain to you why Mazda intake is set up the way it is. And all intakes are going to perform different depending on your, your scenario and your situation. If you have naturally aspirated, um, supercharged or turbocharged, um, some intakes are going to perform better than the others depending on that setup. So I want to just show you my intake setup. So we'll go and look at my intake setup and then I'll show you what Mazda has and why they did it that way. Well, here's my intake setup. I have an auto X hose connected to a generic math that I bought off of eBay. And then I have the engine inertia filter. And then with that, I kept the lower half of the stock box. And then I have my snorkel still hooked up, but this is not the normal snorkel. This is a turbo snorkel, not the one that comes on a naturally aspirated model. Um, and I'm gonna explain to you why this intake setup works best for this supercharger in another video. But what I wanna do is just give you a comparison between my intake setup and the stock setup. And I have the stuff here on the ground. Now, first thing, you know, you're gonna notice, you know, there's this extra panel here. Um, this is a charcoal filter, right? And what this does is for emissions. And there's another charcoal filter here on this box. So let's start off with the snorkel because I wanna explain to you, just like we were just talking about earlier um, with the, the Atkinson cycle. So the intake valves, are open as we start the compression stroke, right? So what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna get mixture coming back up through the intake. So what Mazda did on the NA models, they added this charcoal filter for emissions to suck up the, the extra gases that are coming back up through the intake during the beginning of the compression cycle because of the Atkinson cycle, right? So there's one here and then there's one on the top of the snorkel. Um, the, this does not exist on my turbo snorkel. So as you can see, there's a difference, right? So on my stock snorkel, there is a, a branch resonator up here at the top. They do not have one on a turbo, right? And then you'll notice there is another resonator down here. This is your expansion chamber. chamber. Um, and the reason why they have this um, is because people mostly think that this is a silencer. It's really to allow expansion of gases. So as you're getting air coming into your snorkel, um, on those strokes, like we're talking about, you know, you have your, your four strokes, right? When um, the valves close, so imagine you're having air going into the intake and to the valves, right? As that valve closed, that air is still pushing up against the valve and now it's redirecting, coming back out the cylinder, right? And the same thing with when it's starting the Atkinson cycle, that pressure wave is now going back through the intake. What this down here allows, um, as you have air coming in from outside the car into the air filter, this allows expansion, right? Because as those pulses are coming back, it needs somewhere to go and we don't wanna force the air to come back out of the, uh, the snorkel. So what this allows is that air that's pulsing back to expand in this chamber and still allow air to f flow in one direction into the intake, right? So we have this resonator and then there's a branch one over there. This one on the side is more for sound to cancel frequencies. And this one is also, is just to allow expansion. And if you notice, it's about the size of a cylinder. This allows it is, it's to expand enough to you know, keep that pressure wave from forcing the air back out of the intake because we want it to go directly into it. All right, so that's the difference. My turbo snorkel does not have this and it does not have that. All right, so it's just a straight snorkel because we're not gonna get pulses on a turbo because there is a turbo in the way of those, that uh, pressure wave. Same thing with my supercharger. I do not have that pressure wave coming back out the intake because this supercharger is in the way and those pressure, those, those pressure waves that are coming from the cylinder are being blocked 
by the supercharger and the compressing air. So I don't really have to worry about having a resonator for power because I already have something that is smoothing it out. And I'll show you on a chart how that resonator works. Uh, and you can see it when I had a car on the, the stock, um, stock air box and it didn't have a resonator, you'll see the waves and how it changes, right? So my intake does not have that stuff. And then one thing that I really like about this stock accordion hose compared to my auto X is if I open this up and I pull this off, there's a lip, right? And that lip is responsible, uh, it's, it's for the throttle body, right? And our air is flowing this direction. The whole point is for efficiency. And what you want to do is you want to have the least amount of resistance flowing into the intake to get to the valves, right? So if you can remove steps, that's what you want to do. So on this auto X hose, there's a step as this is pulling in, there's a lip that air is going to hit and it's going to have refraction and bounce back this way. You don't want that on this stock. The only great thing about this stock accordion hose that I really like. So if you look in here, there's a lip, right? And this lip on the inside of here, if I can get a good video, this lip right here is flush with the throttle body in here. So there's like literally no obstruction of flow. It flows straight through from the filter, straight to the throttle body without hitting any kind of ridge and bouncing back, right? Versus this, as it's coming in, there's that throttle body lip on there and my air is flowing and I'm losing efficiency because the air is bouncing onto the lip of that throttle body. So the only thing I could do to make this really better is if I somehow constructed a smooth transition between the throttle body and my Auto X hose. And that has been done on this, you know, stock piece. They have that lip that matches perfectly with it on this side. But the ribs, I feel like, cause turbulence. Some people say it reduces turbulence, but I know for a fact I feel the difference and other people feel it with this auto X hose, how smooth the transition is. So even though there is that lip on here that is helpful, this is still more helpful overall, but it could be better if it had a lip that smoothed out the transition between the hose and the throttle body. So um, another reason why I feel like this is the best setup, like I said, I don't have that extra stuff on this snorkel. So now majority of my air is just being forced and tunneled in here to feed this. Now, if I had a lid on here, I could force more air, but I realistically, I don't wanna force more air when I'm cruising because if I have more air, that means I use more fuel and my fuel economy is gonna go down. Now, that is a reason I why I don't like the Takeda. And I'll talk more about that later, but I just kinda of want to show you my setup. It's pretty simple, turbo snorkel, engine inertia filter, auto X hose and a generic math. And I have it still connected to the bottom of here. This whole setup cost me $155. And I definitely feel like it is the most efficient setup for the supercharger. All right. NA might, they might not, they might have a better setup. I suggest honestly for NA, the stock air box with the can in drop in because you don't have a supercharger or a turbocharger preventing those back pressure waves from interfering with the flow of air going in because you're going to have pulses of you know air coming back out this way from the atkinson cycle and also from hitting the intake valves and bouncing back but you want to keep the flow going in and that's where the stock um, snorkel comes in with the stock air box right so the charcoal filter that's a restriction um, and the really that is only good if you know you care really about the environment But as far as airflow that is going to reduce it so you can reduce re Remove that and then put a can in drop in and in my opinion that is going to be the best setup for naturally aspirated For supercharger. I feel this is absolutely the best setup um, Because you want the shortest path, you know work is distance over time and this is a very short intake So it's going to allow you to get the air immediately there and you know the long the more the air has to flow somewhere the more friction and You know more work it has to do to get to you know point A to point B and you don't want that so this is the path of least resistance and not having the top lid on here and being a sealed box also allows for immediate flow into the intake but since I have the snorkel at the high end, I'm still getting the benefits of, you know, having sort of like a little ram air. Um, the stock box is definitely going to flow more up top 
on the naturally aspirated and probably on this setup too. I'm going to measure it. But because when you're moving on the road, you have air, you know, being forced through here. You know, if I'm going 120, there's 120 mile an hour wind going through here and into this stock sealed portion of the box, right? Um, on a dyno, we saw more power with this intake because we didn't have the floor air coming through here, right? So, you know, restriction wise, this intake flowed better just sitting there, you know? If we're on the road, the stock box more than likely is gonna flow more because we are forcing air and it can't escape through these little holes like this. We'll have the stock box on top of here. So now all this air is being forced through this way. All right. So, and I've talked to numerous customers. I have like, you know, like 300 customers and they all reported the same thing. The flow is better up top with the stock box because it has that resonator, all that stuff to keep the air going in one direction. All right. With turbos, it's going to be completely different, right? Than NA. And the same thing with supercharged is going to be completely different from NA. Um, turbochargers, because of how our turbocharger works, it doesn't work like a typical turbocharger. Um, pretty much these, these engines are very complex, but the lower you can get the intake air temperatures to read, um, the better the ignition time is going to be. And then also this car, the, the turbo cars, they run off of boost pressure. Anytime something heats up, there's going to be more pressure, right? So if you can keep the intake temperatures low and the pressure low going through the whole system, 18 pounds of boost, is going to be more than a hot 18 pounds of boost because as heat things heat up it causes more pressure right but if you can get the same 18 pounds of pressure um in a smaller it would that's more dense you're gonna have more power so we'll talk more about that but i just want to let you know like a little bit about why there's this resonator on here and why i think the stock box is best for naturally aspirated um but also this is very close I do think this has its place, and I still would recommend this for naturally aspirated because as those on this setup, you know, even on NA, as the pulses are coming out, they have a place to go. They'll just escape everywhere else. And I'm still getting good airflow with the snorkel, and it's probably a little bit actually more efficient to have it open like this because as I'm going 80 miles an hour, I don't, I'm not forcing extra air in here to eat up more MPG, right? And one great thing about this filter versus other filter is that it has like a built-in bell mouth, right? Like the bottom is shaped to smooth out the air. And then on the inside of here, just like I was explaining about the lip, there is actually on the inside of this filter, there is a lip and it comes flush with this. So there is no turbulence between my math and my filter is a flat straight path. And the only time I hit turbulence is when this math or not the math, the, this, throttle body is connected to the hose right here so straight through there's no resistance it is a smooth flow until i get here then there's a little resistance and that's all but like i said this is a uh, probably you know my favorite setup i don't think another setup can beat it we tested the flow of different filters with just air blowing through them and this one was very efficient so and it's only 150 dollars 55 dollars to do this whole setup guys so that's all for now.